Hi, my name is Yu Chen Zhou. I am a grad student at the Carnegie Mellon University. Today, I'd like to talk about the long-standing debate about why verbs are harder to learn than nouns. Across the world's languages, children reliably learn nouns more easily than verbs. According to a COPA study by Nelson, verbs comprise only 16% of the first 10 words learned by children, while nouns comprise 65%. So, what causes the dominance of nouns in children's early vocabularies? A vital issue in this problem is what does it really mean to learn the meaning of a word? Well, we take the view that to learn the meaning of a word is essentially to make a map from one modality to the other. For example, to know what is an apple means to just link the word form apple to a visual apple. It means to build a mapping from the language domain to the visual domain. You may extend this to a third domain. You may construct a mapping that aligns concepts in language, visual, as well as in auditory domain. But um, in this project, we will just focus on language and vision. So within this framework, we would unpack the problem and examine a few possible sources of difficulty in learning verbs. One possibility is that verbs are more visually variable than nouns. For example, cats are different from each other in terms of their size or fur color. However, as for jump, in addition to the differences in the agent, jump could be an upward movement, or a forward movement, or even jumping rope is one kind of jump. So, the variability in visual stimuli might make verbs harder to learn than else. Another natural difficulty in learning verbs is that, in order to know the meaning of a verb, you have to know the meaning of the agent and the recipient. Let's take the man kicking the ball example on the right. In order to know what kick means, you have to have some prior knowledge on what is a man and uh, what is a ball. The third point is that, according to Gantner's natural partition hypothesis, concrete nouns are easy acquisition because they are mapped on to visual categories of individual concepts, while verbs make a selection from the available relational information. Let's still take the man kicking ball example. There are actually multiple relations embedded in this picture. The man's kicking the ball for sure, but also the man's gazing at the ball, and the man's close to the ball. Which kind of relation does the word kick refer to? This kind of ambiguity may also give rise to the difficulty in learning verbs. To formalize these ideas, we proposed four hypotheses. We will first verify that nouns are well aligned across the visual system and the language system. The intuition is that the structural similarities in language should be mirrored in the visual domain, because linguistic and visual representations are just the two different viewpoints of the same underlying reality. Here, large circles represent the prototypes of words, and small circles represent individual examples. So compared to alignable nouns, one possibility is that verbs' representations may not align across modalities. For example, wrong may, very, wrong may be very similar to jump visually because in both movements, you are moving up and down, while in the language domain, walk may turn out to be closer to wrong because walk and wrong are more similar in their linguistic usage. Basically, this point is saying that Verbs' structural similarities in language domain may not be mirrored in the visual domain. Alternatively, individual events for the same verb may be more variable than events for the same noun. Ver verbs are more dispersed, so they are harder to learn. The third possibility is that events for different verbs may be more similar to each other than events for different nouns. Events referred to by one verb could be similar to events referred to by a different verb, so the examples overlap with each other. Putting everything together, we would test the three hypotheses about verbs. First, verb systems may be not alignable across modalities. Second, verb examples may be more variable than nouns. And third, verb examples may overlap with each other. 
A prior work by Rosen Love confirmed the prediction that concrete nouns linguistic and visual similarities are highly alignable. Because we want to use a more recent machine vision model to compare nouns to verbs, we begin by replicating the analysis for nouns with the new model. The model is constructed in this way. Following Rose and Love, we used 434 visual categories from the open image before dataset. So this is a re real example of a cat from the dataset. To derive a visual representation for each object category, we used an unsupervised visual model called swapping assignments between views. The model was applied to one image randomly sampled from each object category to produce a 128-dimensional vector. Analogously, we considered the words that corresponded to the relevant 434 images. The language model we used is global vectors for word representation, which is an unsupervised word embedding model. We used pre-trained 300-dimensional semantic vectors derived from the common crawl corpus as the linguistic representations of the words. To estimate the alignment, we asked whether nouns linguistic similarities are correlated with their visual similarities. In each modality, we compared the pairwise similarities of all words vectors using cosine similarity, and then we generated similarity matrices. We then computed the correlation between the linguistic and visual similarities using Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. To assess the strength of this correlation, we compared the true system to simulated alternative systems produced by permuting the true mapping system. We generated many, many permitted systems. For example, in permitted system 1, two mappings are incorrect, while in permitted system 2, all three mappings are wrong. We control the proportion of incorrect mappings by sampling a hundred alternatives for each level of incorrectness. The results of simulation is shown in this figure. The x-axis is the proportion of mappings permuted, and the y-axis is just the Spearman correlation between linguistic and visual similarities. The mean alignment at each level of permutation is represented by the blue line, and the dark and light regions represent one standard deviation and the minimums, maximums, respectively. The true mapping corresponds to the cross on the top left. Overall, we found that nouns linguistic and visual representations are well aligned. The correlation between words linguistic and visual representations is 0.214, which is reliably positive and is comparable to Rosen Love's results. In addition, the strength of the true mappings alignment is higher than the strength of 99.93% of permitted mappings, which suggests that an agent is very likely to identify a decent mapping system by maximizing the alignment between image-based embeddings and word-based embeddings. In conclusion, we replicated the Rosen Love's analysis of nouns and our results accord with Rose and Love's finding that nouns linguistic and the visual representations are well aligned. In other words, nouns meanings are relatively transparent. When we want to ask, is this also true for verbs? So in study 2, we use the same method as in study 1 to understand whether verbs are harder to learn than nouns because their visual linguistic mappings are less transparent. The pipeline of the study is identical to study 1. Because we compare nouns with verbs, we used a new corpus called VRD that contains annotations for both nouns and verbs. VRD includes a hundred different types of nouns and 70 predicates. From these categories, we excluded two nouns for which we did not have glow vectors to define their linguistic representations. And for predicates, we selected the 30 that correspond to verbs rather than, for example, prepositions. So this is an example of a picture of a noun from dataset, which is a bus. And the, the way we consider the border of a verb is to take the union of the bounding boxes of any agents or objects that are annotated as taking part in the verb. For example, in this picture, the bounding box for verb follow is the union of the bounding boxes of the mom and the kid. Coming to the result, again, 
The blue cross represents the true mapping, and the red regions refer to misleading mappings, mappings that are imperfect but have higher alignment correlation than the true mapping. The true mapping system is more aligned than 99.27% of simulated mappings, which is similar to what we observed in study 1, i.e. nonlinguistic linguistic and visual representations are well aligned. In contrast, the true verb mapping system's alignment is only greater than 80.97% of permitted systems, or more intuitively, the red regions in the verb figure, which denotes misleading mappings, is much larger than the red regions in the null figure. This comparison suggests that verbs' representations are less well aligned than nouns. In other words, verbs are indeed harder to learn than nouns. However, this experiment doesn't tell us about the sources of difficulty in verb alignment. Are verbs harder to learn because of their fundamental structural deviations across different modalities, or alternatively, verbs are harder to learn because there are more variability in verbs' visual categories? To address this question, we construct visual prototypes for, by averaging together the visual representations of multiple images of each visual category. For example, we construct the prototype of word jump by averaging several representations of images annotated as jump. We averaged 25 images together per category to form visual prototypes, and we discovered that aggregating 25 exemplars does improve the alignment for both nouns and verbs. However, because the true mapping for nouns already has higher alignment than almost all of the simulated mappings, averaging multiple exemplars together produces little improvement in its relative strengths. In contrast, when multiple exemplars are averaged together to form a visual prototype, the alignment of the true verb mapping relative to alternative mappings improves significantly from around 80% to more than 96%. This result suggests that the structure of verbs' visual categories is the primary driver of their difficulty in learning. To better understand this, we ask how many exemplars are required to construct a good mapping. Here, y-axis is just the percentage number we reported in previous slides, which measures what proportion of permitted mappings are less well aligned than the true mapping, and the x-axis is the number of exemplars aggregated per visual category. As the number of exemplars used to construct visual prototypes increases, there is little benefit for nouns because accuracy is already close to the ceiling. In contrast, for verbs, aggregating over even a small number of exemplars dramatically increases the mapping accuracy. In fact, once around 10 exemplars are averaged together, verbs are mapped nearly as accurately as nouns. This finding corresponds to panel B. We found that on the contrary to the hypothesis, verbs are alignable as long as adequate visual exemplars are provided. The finding is quite exciting, but to further understand why averaging exemplars into a prototype improves the mapping accuracy, we unpack the contributions of two sources of potential differences in visual categories. First, we consider the variance of, of exemplars of the same category, which is defined as the average Euclidean distance between each exemplar's embedding and the category centroid in the visual domain. And we consider the discriminability of exemplars from different categories, which is calculated as the average Euclidean distance of all combinations of pairs of category centroids in the visual domain. We found that the variance of verb concept is greater than non-concept. It means that different events labeled by the same noun are more like each other than events labeled by the same verb. Also, the, the discriminability of verbs is reliably lower than the discriminability of nouns. Taken together, compared to nouns, examples of the same verb category are more dispersed, and events described by different verbs are more confusable. Hence, we propose that verbs are harder to learn than nouns because of the high variance of visual events of the same verb category and low discriminability of events of different verb categories. In conclusion, in this project, we apply the alignability matrix to nouns and verbs to explain the difficulty in acquiring verbs. We showed that verbs are harder to learn than nouns primarily because of the differences in their visual category and we discover that verbs become almost as easy to learn as nouns when multiple exemplars are aggregated together. Finally, we propose that this phenomenon can be explained by verbs' high variance and low discriminability compared to nouns. 
Note that we also replicated all the experiments on a larger data set called Visual Genome with 355 nouns and 356 verbs. The analysis yield the same qualitative results, which strengthens the, valid the validity of our findings. I would like to thank Dan Yurovsky and other people in our lab for supporting me throughout this unusual year and uh, offering me great, great advice on the project. Thank you for your attention.